Hello, and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment. As you've been doing your research on which stocks to buy, you may have come across the concept of an economic moat, or the importance of the business you are thinking of investing in having a moat. Today's video, we're going to look at what having a moat means for investors. But first, we're going to have a short and possibly inaccurate history lesson. Back in the old days, the kings and other important people had a lot of gold and treasure. The problem was that their enemies wanted the gold too, so they would always try and steal it. Therefore, the rich kings needed somewhere to put their treasure so it was nice and safe. They ordered their loyal subjects to build a castle. It takes a long time to build a castle. It has to be big enough to live in and store the gold. The subjects had to build very strong and tall walls so the bad guys couldn't just walk in and steal it. These castles were pretty effective and stopped the bad guys for a while. The king's enemies came up with some ingenious ways to get past these walls. They would build wooden ladders and simply climb up over the walls, or they would tunnel underneath the walls and get in that way. Once they would get inside the walls, they would kill everyone, and then they would get the treasure and the castle for free. The king and the other important people needed a stronger defence. Something that would stop the attackers from stealing their business and customers, I mean their castle and money. They needed a moat. Now the moat was a big ditch, either empty or filled with water that surrounded the castle. This made it much, much harder for the attackers to take what belonged to the king. A similar concept of moats exists in business today, only it's not actually a ditch filled with water nowadays. It's important when picking companies to invest in that they have a moat or protection against competitors try to steal their market share. You don't want the enemies coming in and taking all of your hard-earned money. So what can be used as an economic moat? There are a number of common moats that companies use to protect their companies. I will go over a few common ones now. First, high switching costs is one way to keep business away from competitors. If a company uses one type of software on its devices, then it'll have spent a lot of money on buying the software, installing and setting it up, and then training its staff. Even if a potentially better or cheaper alternative comes onto the market, companies more likely to stick with the software they already have, as they don't want to spend more money on switching over. Apple is an example of a company that does this fairly well with their whole ecosystem. If you have an iPhone, then you may also be tempted to buy an Apple Watch, the AirPods, and set up an iTunes account, etc. Then when it's time to renew your phone contract, you're more likely to stick with Apple, as switching to Android would make the other purchases redundant. Moat number two, economies of scale and cost advantages. Once a company gets big enough, it can start benefiting from economies of scale, which is a proportionate saving in costs gained by an increased level of production. It can make things for much cheaper than a new entrant could essentially preventing them from entering the market. Another benefit from being a big company is you can start throwing your weight around and getting better deals from suppliers. The third common type of moat is intangible assets. Remember when we covered what assets were on the other video and we got to intangible assets on the balance sheet? Well, it's intangible assets again. So intangible assets are the licenses and patents as well as the branding that supports the company. Patents block others from selling the same product is a very common moat in the pharmaceutical industry. And we saw how important licenses were when we looked at Las Vegas Sands for September's stock of the month. Branding works a little differently as it aims to prevent customers from thinking that two products are comparable. A strong, believable brand is one that convinces customers that the product is actually superior to the other substitutes on the market. The last type of moat we will cover on this video is efficient scale. If an industry is set up in a way that it only makes sense for one or only a small number of companies to operate, then it will be harder for new entrants to enter the market. This type of moat was my justification for buying National Grid. It is extremely costly and unnecessary for new competitors to enter the market for distributing energy. It will cost a lot to set up the new infrastructure and it will be a waste of resources. In these kinds of natural monopoly industries, it's unlikely that a new competitor would enter the market, 
unless the incumbent firm was doing a truly dismal job. Okay, now we have covered a number of different types of economic moats. I hope we will look out for them on your long-term investments. If you felt like this was interesting, please let me know by clicking the like button. If you want to join me on the dividend experiment, then hit the subscribe button and follow along. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. See ya!